anticipation of it. Wind and rain continue to pound Gulfport, Mississippi, and some of the damage has already been done. We'll have a live report for you in just a moment. And I'm Kristen Dodd in Pensacola, where many roads are underwater. We'll continue to bring you updates. And winds of 55 miles per hour continue to pelt the Crescent City, but the heavy rain has not materialized. A full report next. And I'm Rick Griffin. Welcome to this special edition of Weather Center. While well, the eye of Hurricane George continues to hug the coast of Mississippi, very near the city of Biloxi. Let's get the latest facts and figures on Hurricane George. And we have an update from the reconnaissance aircraft now of a position as of 8 o'clock Central Daylight Time of 30.3 north and 89 degrees west. The pressure has come up uh, 4 millibars to 965 millibars. The top sustained winds remain officially at 105 miles per hour, although the gusts have been significantly stronger than that based on actual observations. For instance, in Biloxi, earlier this morning, I think it was about 4 a.m., a wind gust of 126 miles per hour. And the movement of George continues to be slowly off to the north, northwest, 6 to 7 miles per hour. Hurricane warnings remain in effect. Just to review these very quickly from Morgan City, Louisiana, the Panama City in the state of Florida. Now let's go live into the field where our Weather Channel crews are located. Kristen Dodds in Pensacola, Jim Cantori, Gulfport, Mississippi, and Bill Keneally is in New Orleans, Louisiana. Our first stop is Gulfport and Jim Cantori. Good morning, Rick. We continue to get the very, very, very heavy rainfall here as, uh, as well as the winds. I've taken a step out of the uh, if you will, the confines of our hotel, the nice uh, warm, dry overlay there, and come out into this wind, which has calmed down a little bit. But we still occasionally get a gust of hurricane force, and you'll know that because I'll probably be tilting on over. As uh, Blair Carper, our cameraman, pans around here, you can see some of the damage which has been done. Again, this is just a small sampling, ladies and gentlemen, of what's been done around here as a result of Hurricane George. A lot of the damage has been to homes and businesses, We've had reports of trees and power lines down, and of course we've been without power now for the last five hours. And it's uh, a very eerie feeling, I'll tell you that right now, get, well, getting up in the middle of the night, I didn't even sleep last night, uh, of having no power. You, you really take that for granted, that's for sure, when you can't see and all you can hear is the ferocious howl of the wind. Again, we've had damage to signage around here, we've had damage to some of the signal lights. I can take the storm cam shot now from our live truck, from the storm tracker, and you can see a very heavy signal light, which is just laying there, uh, very, very close actually to where we were doing live shots last night on the other side of the hotel here, the Holiday Inn Express, which is where we're staying. But no doubt uh, some big problems here continue as now the wind's dying down just a little bit. We got the heavy rain. And in some cases, uh, we've heard reports out of Pascagoula they've already received 15 to 20 inches of rain. Well, an area that's received perhaps even a bit more than that has been Pascagoula, Mississippi. Or make that, excuse me, Pensacola, Florida. And Kristen Dodd has a live report for us this morning. Good morning, Kristen. Okay, Jim, I'm not able to hear you, but I can relate to uh, some of the things you were saying earlier about the power outages, as we have been without power now for well over 12 hours. A lot of residents of Pensacola, I'm sure, slept with the flashlights next to the bed and the boots by the door, because they are going to need them as they're heading out that door this morning. Much of Pensacola is underwater. Downtown Pensacola reporting 17 inches of rainfall. On top of that, all of the waves crashing against the boardwalks from Pensacola Bay have overwashed, and so we are looking at a very serious situation in the downtown area. At the beaches, the situation is turned much worse. Although we are not allowed over there at this point because the bridges are shut down, a emergency pa management personnel team is over there right now assessing the damage and their pre preliminary expectations are that it is quite extensive, not only due to some storm surge, but also the high waves that were crashing in. The rain continues to come down here. We also are seeing behind me Interstate 10. This stretch is open over a Scambia Bay. However, as you're heading over toward the Alabama line, that's where we're seeing uh, that area being washed out of I-10, and we do have reports that it is closed. The National Guard has been called to Escambia County to try and restore order and to help folks out. Now let's join Bill Keneally in New Orleans. All right, thanks a lot, Kristen. Things are a little different over here. We've got the full power, at least in our hotel down here in the downtown area, but the interstates, on the other hand, they are all shut, including I-10 and I-12, the major east-west routes. 
The winds here still from the northwest now, 40 to occasionally 55 miles per hour. What that is doing, that's pushing a lot of water on the south shores of Lake Pontchartrain as well as Lake Bourne. But thankfully, the heavy tidal surge never did materialize. Quick check behind me, you can see the Mississippi River, a lot of white caps out there. And once again, there's a fair amount of power out in the area on the order of 100,000 customers. But as I said, the downtown area fared pretty well. And another aspect, the heavy rain never did materialize. I would be very surprised if we've had any more than an inch and a half to two inches of rain down here in the French Quarter. And we're high atop the Riverview Room balcony right above the Jackson Brewery. So we're doing pretty well there. The pumping system has not been tested as of yet. But I'd watch the parishes across the way, including St. Tammany, Tanshapahoa, and Washington parishes for some renewed heavy rainfall over the course of the morning hours. Back to you, Rick Griffin. That's Bill Keneally in New Orleans, Louisiana. Well, Florida National Guard troops are using trucks and boats this morning to rescue about 200 people from homes in the panhandle flooded out by slow-moving Hurricane George. And heavy rain continues to pound the state with many roads underwater. One highway underwater is Interstate 10 near the Alabama border. It has apparently been washed out. Emergency management teams are surveying the damage at Pensacola Beach at this hour. And Gulf Power reports that 82,000 homes and businesses have lost electricity. Again, conditions remain rough in the Florida Panhandle with that torrential rain, 40 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts and tornadoes. In fact, a tornado warning remains in effect for Walton County in northwest Florida until 920 Eastern Daylight Time. And over in Alabama, Covington County is under a tornado warning until 930 Eastern, 830 Central. With that in mind, let's turn to our hurricane expert, Dr. Steve Lyons. Steve, uh, the severe uh, weather threat, tornadic thunderstorm threat is definitely in place, but what are some of the other major concerns now with George? Well, right now, the primary concern is rain and flooding. That is always a concern, whether it's uh, from a tropical cyclone or anything else, and uh, you need to be very, very careful here. If you venture outside in your car the next uh, six hours, there's going to be very persistent rain there. Uh, looking at the uh, Weather Channel uh, lightning uh, the last uh, couple of hours and we we've seen very little lightning in the in this general vicinity of all this rain so that's good news but uh, the, the other bad news is we see the eye basically taking a wobble back along the coast and it really has not moved appreciably in the last hour or two as a matter of fact the latest uh, fix was actually a tenth of a degree farther south than the previous one in association with that little wobble so we're not seeing it go any place. It looks like it's going to get out of there very, very slowly and it produce a huge amount of rain, primarily on the north, central, and east side of the circulation. How much are we talking as far as rain totals? I mean, we've seen the official totals of 14, 15, 16 inches. How much do you think? Well, they could get another 12 to 14 inches out of it before all is said and done. And even more than that, if it persists and it just dies right there uh, along the coastline or just slightly inland. Here's our closer uh, radar view, uh, the main part of the storm, the most intense part of Hurricane George, still southern Mississippi and southern Alabama. That's correct. Uh, it's circulation centers right here. Strongest winds are on the east side coming up here. A lot of rain bands in here. Some of them wrapping around, and of course the strong winds are going to be in these other rain bands here as well. The wind is quite a bit lighter out here, but I think what you're going to find out here in the Florida Panhandle as they go out here is very extensive beach erosion there in, in combination with some of the damage to the homes. That'll be the problem there. The problem in here, of course, is going to be flooding. And uh, the thing we have to keep watching now is uh, how much more flooding we're going to get. Of course, uh, flood and flash flood watches have been posted, and there are some warnings of parts of Alabama and Florida especially, and that's where the heaviest rain has come down. By the way, this is the Florida Panhandle, southern Alabama, Mobile Bay is in here. This is southern Mississippi, and Steve, we look at this and we see Doppler estimated maximum amounts of 17 inches at this point. That's correct, and that, uh, that matches fairly well with some of the reports we've gotten. 17 inches in Pensacola was an official rain gauge measurement, so it's still accumulating. We're going to see a lot more rain before it's all over, but the eye is closing, the pressure is rising. I think we've seen the last of George as a hurricane here very shortly, within the next 6 to 12 hours. But the threat of tornadic thunderstorms continues for probably another day or two. That is correct. Okay. Dr. Steve Lyons will talk to him again in about a half an hour. Meanwhile, if you're going to be stepping away from your television set, but you'll be close to a computer, you can get the latest information at weather.com, our internet site. Let's go back to the studio now with Mark Nancuso. And today's forecast brought to you by Healthy Choice. 
High pressure will shove a cold front down the east coast today and will say goodbye to the rain. Thanks for joining us on this Monday morning. I'm Rick Griffin here with Dr. Steve Lyons, our hurricane expert. Let's get the latest on Hurricane George, which is very close to the coast of Mississippi at 30.4 north and 89 degrees west. The eye of the storm very close to Gulfport, where there's some quite a very volatile weather this morning, including a brand new tornado warning. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. Top sustained winds with George down to 100 miles per hour. Still, of course, a very powerful hurricane. George is drifting to the northwest, and the pressure is 965 millibars. Hurricane warnings continue to be posted from Panama City, Florida, westward to Morgan City, uh, Louisiana, including the New Orleans metro area. Well, joining us live on the phone this morning is Mark Morial. He is the mayor of New Orleans. Good morning, sir. Thanks for joining us. Can you give us an update on the situation in your city? It appears as though we have uh, a lot of debris down to power lines, some down branches throughout the Any ideas on when the curfews will be lifted today? Uh, well, I think we've lost the mayor. Hopefully we can get him back a little bit uh, later on this hour. So with that in mind, let's go uh, to our live crews out in the field. This time we have Kristen Dodd in Pensacola, Jim Cantori in Gulfport. And let's go to Jim Cantori first. Well, good morning, Rick. Uh, you know, even though we've seen a little bit of a break now and then, we still are getting hammered with heavy, heavy rainfall here, as well as some very, very gusty winds, uh, much like you saw there. The report is uh, power has been out for six hours now, six and a half hours, and uh, it went out last night with a bang. It was like a fireworks display here when the power went out. All sorts of transformers blowing just about everywhere. And as our cameraman Blair Carper pans around, you can see uh, what is left of some of the damage here. We've got reports of some shingles off of some of the hotels here. Some of the signage has been either bent over or, you know, some of the plastic signs themselves have actually been removed. We have a report from the police department that there's tremendous structural damage to some of the homes and businesses down into Gulfport. We're only five miles removed from the city and five miles from the water as well. And there is a curfew which has been extended through 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. In other words, no one is supposed to be on the roads there. So the scene uh, not pretty here. Not to mention it's kind of interesting from a weather perspective, these little lulls and then all of a sudden these little bursts of wind that come on up and it's really interesting to see how the rain swirls through the parking lot, almost like we have these little vortices going on here, and those could be uh, possible tornadoes. Well, another area that's received some problems uh, as a result of George is Pensacola Beach, Florida. Let's get a live report. All right, thanks a lot, Jim. That's right. Uh, we have received a lot of rainfall, as much as 17 inches in downtown Pensacola. We are east of the city at this point. The wind not so bad here. The rain actually kind of tapering off. But periodically, we do get some more of those heavy downpours. And the farther west you head, more toward the uh, downtown area and westward, that's where we have been seeing some torrential downpours and problems with flooding. We, too, have seen some wind damage behind me in the parking lot here of the Exxon on the Scambia Bay. We do have plenty of limbs down, also a lot of the leaves are turning the parking lot into kind of a uh, emerald green at this point. That's the case over many of the roadways. We also have seen power line down and also cable and telephone lines down. Many areas are without power and have been so for at least 12 to 18 hours and so that continues to be a huge problem. We're still waiting to hear on whether or not the residents will be allowed back onto the beaches area. We're waiting a call from Monty Blues with the Santa Rosa Island Authority. And as soon as he gives us the word, we'll pass it along to you. Now back to you, Rick. Kristen Dodd in Pensacola, Florida. Well, we have back on the phone line with us Mark Morial, the mayor of New Orleans. Sir, once again, thanks for joining us. Could you uh, go over again yeah. the situation real, in your city? Real quickly, we remain under a mandatory curfew, and our shelters remain open, and we're not allowing people to leave. All of the main roadways into the city remain closed because we still have gusts, we still have rain, and since the storm apparently has slowed down or even stalled, it appears as though it's going to affect us throughout the day. Uh, we have downed tree lines, downed trees, downed power lines. We also have, uh, on the in the lakefront area, Lake Puncher Train has come over the seawall, and the New Orleans Lakefront Airport, which is a, a airport primarily used by private planes, uh, 
has some flooding uh, and is somewhat underwater. Uh, we were very well prepared for this storm. We think we've avoided the worst of it, but uh, I'm not comfortable at this time reopening the city, so the curfew is going to remain in effect indefinitely, and the city is going to remain substantially closed indefinitely. We hope that when we get the 10 o'clock report, we'll be able to evaluate our situation and make some decisions as to when we'll lift the curfew and reopen the city. Thank you very much for that information. That's Mark Morial. He's the mayor of New Orleans. Well, just into the Weather Channel, uh, another tornado warning. This one is for Harrison County in southern Mississippi. The Sheriff's Department reports a tornado in the vicinity of Gulfport near Klein Road in the Bel Air subdivision. This tornado's actually been reported on the ground. So Dr. Steve Lyons, our hurricane expert, severe weather has become a much more significant factor with Hurricane George recently. It sure has. It's now become a, primarily a rain and a severe weather factor, and uh, it's going to continue to be that way the next 12 to 24 hours, a real problem. Rainfall, of course, with a very slow movement of the hurricane, there is a correlation between the speed of the storm and how much rain, and you were thinking maybe upwards of 30 inches or more in some spots. It's not impossible to get that. Uh, of course, we were showing this frame uh, as sort of a potential for a typical tropical cyclone as a function of speed here. Uh, currently, it's moving at the very most five, and it looks more like three to zero. That's not necessarily going to continue for the full day, but you can see the rainfall potential goes way up as the speed goes way down. So uh, rain is accumulating, it's already flooding. And keep in mind, if you're in an area where the winds are still strong and you're getting a lot of rain, watch out for trees because the roots tend to weaken and they tend to topple over. We could get a lot of tree damage in this. Tornadic thunderstorms and flooding rain are certainly not the only aspects left with George. That is correct. We're getting a lot of uh, still some waves along the beach, especially along the Pensacola Beach. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of erosion out there. Uh, those waves will be continuing. You can see here is sort of a damage and an impact expected the next 24 to 48 hours. Uh, persistent beach erosion and high waves over in this area. Surge will be there, but secondary. Some winds gusting to 50 miles per hour. And of course, rain could be a big potential, but right now it's a potential only in the extreme uh, western portion of the panhandle. The central area here here, we've got the worst conditions. The surge, 10 to 15 feet, should be subsiding as the system weakens and moves in slowly, but it's still up quite a bit right now. Rain is a huge p problem here right now. We're getting a lot of rain in there, and uh, of course the wind uh, gusting to over 100 miles per hour will gradually subside, but not quickly. Over in the greater New Orleans area, the mayor, as we just heard, he was very, very lucky. He missed the brunt of it. Still some surge on the outer areas there, of 4 to 8 feet. Rain is a much less importance there, but they could still get some and still wind gusts upwards of 50 miles per hour, not impossible, and some of the rain that might buffet them later today. Okay, perhaps you can indicate where you think George is going to go from now through the next uh, 24 to 36 hours. Well, right now we're, we're expecting it to take a very gradual but steady north to, and turn a uh, north the track and then turn slowly toward the northeast. But the time, the timing on this is very critical. It doesn't look right now like it's doing it very quickly, and it's sitting right across our ridge axis of high pressure here. And what that means is it's almost stalled the last uh, four hours. Well, we have flash flood and flood uh, watches and warnings in effect. Uh, Baldwin County in Alabama would be one. There's definitely the threat of flooding. This is our Doppler radar, radar estimated precipitation, and recently it has indicated as much as 22 inches of rain over the Florida Panhandle. That's correct, and this was the rainfall totals ending this morning at 8 a.m. They're now accumulating, and we're getting uh, ranges of uh, rates on the order of about a half inch to two inches per hour. And if you add those up over 24 hours, you can add the arithmetic yourself. That's basically 6 to 24 inches or more per, hour oh, per day. Steve, we see the tornado watch, which remains in effect. What part of the hurricane is most susceptible to tornadic thunderstorms? Well, it's always the right front quadrant, so it's really this portion of the of the hurricane up in here, and you can see quite a few rain bands still coming up. And notice here, they're getting very close to Montgomery. So up in here, when daybreak gets in there and we start to heat up a little bit, some of these bands could uh, provide some tornadoes. But also down in here, we're getting some very close to the circulation center reports of tornadoes as well. So severe weather all on the east side at landfall is a potential the rest, the rest of the day. Okay, Steve, and still again in Harrison and Hancock counties in southern Mississippi, tornado warnings are in effect. Stay with us for frequent updates. If you're online, you can stop by weather.com. Now back to the studio. Here's Mike Motley. 
and uh, this weather center sponsored by IAMS. Take a quick look at your forecast into the northeast. <laughs> This live picture from Gulfport, Mississippi shows a fear about Hurricane George coming true. The high winds and the heavy rain over a long period of time. George made landfall in Mississippi. Now its slow movement is allowing rain to collect to potentially dangerous flood levels. And at least four states could feel the effects of Hurricane George. Good morning. Welcome to the special edition of Weather Center. I'm Rick Griffin, and I'm here with Dr. Steve Lyons, our hurricane expert. And we'll get his analysis of Hurricane George in just a moment. First, let's take a look at the current position of George, basically hugging the Mississippi coastline at 30.4 north and 89 degrees west. Top sustained winds about 100 miles per hour, and George continues to drift to the northwest, aggravating the already very heavy amounts of rainfall that have come down with George so far, one aspect of the storm. Pressure now continuing to rise fairly steadily, 967 millibars. On to our hurricane warnings, just to, to review those very quickly, from Morgan City in Louisiana to Panama City in Florida. Well, we continue to cover Hurricane George locations all along the Gulf Coast. This time we're going to go live to Jim in uh, Gulfport, Mississippi, and Bill Keneally in New Orleans, Louisiana. Jim, let's go to you for, first. Hey, Rick, we continue to get these howling winds out of the west, mainly tropical storm force, but of course, what has been the story this morning has been the relentless rain. I mean, it just continues to absolutely pour. You can see I'm basically standing in a, a pool of water here. I'm surrounded by water, and there's a, a Wendy's, which is about two doors down from me, which is completely surrounded by about a foot of water. So we've had very, very heavy rain. In some estimates, it's been anywhere from 15 to 20 inches. Now, as my cameraman, Blair Carper, pans around, you can see what's going on around here with this wind and rain and some of the damage that's already been uh, felt as a result of that. And I will tell you two things. Number one, I have seen many National Guard vehicles go south on Highway 49, which is exactly the highway I'm standing in front of. So they're heading down toward the beaches. Uh, I don't know why, but certainly one would guess that there's a tremendous amount of damage down there and they need to aid in some type of, of, of event or, or perhaps emergency. Number two, the curfew, which was supposed to end tonight at 6 o'clock, will be continued until 6 o'clock tomorrow morning so folks cannot get out on the roads. Let me show you some of the recent pictures that we've just gotten off of the coast. This is down in near a Gulfport in Biloxi, Mississippi. And what is, I guess, most clear here is the tremendous wave action, the water, the rise in the water as a result of the surge. Remember, this is east of where the center has come ashore. So you are going to get the rise in water, perhaps as high as 10 to 12 feet. And uh, my cameraman, Jim Lee, who went down and shot these pictures, was telling me that he saw a tremendous change in wind direction on his way down there. So we being west of the center now, he went down to Gulfport, got some calm winds, and then went east to Biloxi, where the wind shifted out of the southeast. So the center is still swirling around between Gulfport and Biloxi. And yeah, we've seen a drop in the wind field, sure. But the rain continues to hammer away at Gulfport. Let's go to Bill Keneally now in New Orleans for a live report. Bill? Well, thank you, Jim. We continue to have some of that uh, hurricane ambiance here in the Big Easy as well. You can hear the, uh, the dull moaning roar of the wind behind me. And speaking of that wind, it's a northwest wind, thankfully, so we did not catch that dreaded surge off of the Gulf of Mexico. However, that said, there's still some very high waves whipping ashore on the south end of all the area lakes, including Lakes Pontchartrain and Lake Bourne. And because of that, a lot of roadways on those lake fronts are shut. Let's take a turn now to my right and look back across the Mississippi River, the mighty river flowing the way it should today. Yesterday, the surge was actually carrying the flow upstream. Today, as we look across to the West Bank, it's moving from right to left, which is carrying it downriver. The Highway 90 bridge is visible at times, though. Sometimes we're only catching glimpses of it. And these winds are howling, by the way. They're on the order of 40 to occasionally 55 miles per hour. So, Rick, the power is still out across uh, a fair amount of the area. There's still a curfew imposed. And again, the bridges are shut, including the Pontchartrain Causeway, as well as all the interstate bridges. So there's no timetable on when things are going to get back to normal here in the city. All right, that's Bill Keneally in New Orleans, uh, Louisiana. Thanks for that report, Bill. Well, although Louisiana escaped the brunt of Hurricane George, New Orleans, New Orleans mayor says what damage there is makes it necessary to continue the mandatory curfew. 
basically we remain under a mandatory curfew and our shelters remain open and we're not allowing people to leave. All of the main roadways into the city remain closed because we still have gusts, we still have rain, and since the storm apparently has slowed down or even stalled, it appears as though it's going to affect us throughout the day. Uh, we have downed tree lines, downed trees, downed power lines. We also have, uh, on the, in the lakefront area, Lake Puncher Train has come over the seawall, and the New Orleans Lakefront Airport, which is a, a airport primarily used by private planes, uh, has some flooding and is somewhat underwater. And once again, that curfew will remain in effect indefinitely. Also in Louisiana, effective immediately, there is a dusted on curfew imposed for Plaque Mines Parish from Myrtle Grove to Venice to West Bank. Uh, down trees and power lines in that region, uh, roof damage, electrical power is out. Outside the hurricane protection levees, there does not appear to be any damage to the uh, levee system. Uh, highway travel is not advised because of downed lines, and Louisiana highways 23 and 39 will remain closed for the next 24 to 48 hours, in addition to what you heard the mayor say there, that the major interstates remain closed in the New Orleans uh, metropolitan area. Well, we head now to our hurricane expert, uh, Dr. Steve Lyons, who joins me at the update desk here. Steve, where is the hurricane now? How slowly is it moving, and what does that mean for the next 24 to 36 hours? Well, right now, it's stalled right at the coast. As a matter of fact, there's an east wind on the mainland portion of the, uh, the uh, Gulf Coast, which means it still actually has not officially crossed uh, into the, uh, uh, the central United States coast. At least it, it isn't right now. It may have crossed and then come back. What that means is it's bad news because it's not moving very fast. We still expect it to, uh, right now it's just to the, right almost in the, uh, in the bay of Biloxi Bay there. And uh, the wind right here is easterly, indicating that it's south of the uh, primary coastline. It's, we expect it though to continue on a northwest and then eventually a northeastward uh, direction, but it's gonna be very, very slow and that's gonna produce a huge amount of rain. How much rain can we expect? Well, we've already had upwards of a foot and a half in some locations, uh, well over a foot in many locations, and uh, really at and to the east of the circulation over here, we have a lot of thunderstorm activity. You can see some of these overshooting tops here on the, uh, on the satellite imagery there. If I take that off of there, you can see the shadows being cast. You can also see it here on the radar as well, some of these very heavy rain bands in here. And as these move on shore, you notice if you're in one point here, you're going to get shower after shower after shower of about two inches per hour and that's going to accumulate over two three four six hours you're going to get another foot of rain there and it just doesn't seem to be moving much at all right now so it's it's bad news rain wise uh, basically Biloxi and Eastward it's great for New Orleans in that they're getting really only peripheral winds and a little bit of rain but it's very light so they've really been spared so far and that's that's good news for them anyway and here's a rundown of the uh, impacts with George during the next uh, 48 hours, let's say. Over here in the uh, Pensacola area, we really uh, expect to see a significant amount of beach erosion from the wave action there. The waves will stay up another 12 or 16 hours, well above 15 feet. The wind won't be too much of a problem other than in gusts. The real issue here as well is gonna be rain. Rain is the big issue there. It's got those heavy rain bands coming in. And we already noticed here we have uh, a foot of rain on the ground already there. In the central portion, Mobile Bay and up out to Biloxi area, we've had a big storm surge. That's going to continue uh, to, to lessen over the next three to six hours. Uh, wind will be strong, but going down. But here again, the major factor there is rain. And over in the greater New Orleans area, uh, primary uh, thing, uh, some coastal surge, uh, a little bit of rain and a little bit of wind, but they're really in pretty good shape right now. So uh, they, don't, they don't look too bad. Rainfall has been tremendous so far on this map. It's the 24 hour total until about eight o'clock uh, this morning. Just how much rain has come down so far? Well, you can see here we had uh, values exceeding 12 inches estimated from the Doppler radar. And of course, right over here at the ground, we had an 11 inch uh, 24 hour total. And since that time, and some of these bands were collecting about two inches an hour in the bands and about a half an inch an hour outside the bands. And as you mentioned earlier, it's more important to consider the rate of the rainfall rather than the total rainfall. That's right. For immediate flash flooding, the rain rate is extremely important. Will you 
accumulate water faster than you can get rid of it. Of course, now that everything is flooded, the total rain amount is becoming important, but for flash flooding, it's, the rain rate is still going to be the most important thing, especially for overtopping rivers and streams. You can see here, this is an estimated maximum rainfall over the next 